Okay. I love Google Maps. I've been a Google Maps editor for years, and in my opinion, Maps is the single greatest available navigation and mapping software. But that said, it has a number of issues that you as a user should be aware of and which Google must fix. Google Maps sucks for biking and transit, and it's ruining how we get around or between our cities. As a navigation tool for drivers, Maps is second to none. Real-time traffic calculation, multiple route options, and directions which are usually quite accurate. Beyond this, Google Maps is the number one way to find new restaurants, shops, and things to do in a given place. The issue with Maps, however, is that it's slowing down the modal shift away from cars. What if you don't want to drive on a certain trip? Or what if you are genuinely considering the best way to reach a new destination and have options for how to get there? If you're like most people, you will probably look up directions on Google Maps. And one of the things that I've used on the Google is uh, to pull up maps. But when you see the four options for getting there, driving, walking, transit, or biking, there's a good chance that driving will be the shortest. This isn't an issue if the other modes actually are longer, but they often aren't, or it isn't so bad as what Google Maps says. So why does this happen, and what can we do about it? Perhaps more importantly, what must Google Maps do to fix these issues for all of us? The answer in just a moment, but first a reminder to like, subscribe, and check out the Patreon for early access, and to join the community of like-minded urbanists that we're building together. Come say hi. And now back to the video. Now, before arguing that these issues only affect areas with poor public transit or biking infrastructure, I find that it is actually more frustrating in places with good transit and biking options. Plus, with 86% of trip miles in the EU being made by car, this topic is crucial for my entire audience. In this video, I will mention the problems alongside my solutions so as not to confuse anyone. Now, let's dive into Maps' first problem. Google Maps ignores car parking. Car navigation is shown as point-to-point, -point, while transit directions are shown with walking on both ends. This alone is not a problem, however, it assumes that you are already at your car or that a car can pick you up right from where you stand. It assumes that there are no, no stopping zones or that major tourist attractions have easy vehicle access just because a road passes near them. It also assumes that you won't need to find parking elsewhere and walk to your destination. Sometimes a vehicle can pick you up and even drop you off exactly at your starting or ending points, but that changes inside of a city or even a large town. Sure, if you live in the countryside, your destination probably has ample parking, but you will often be unable to park in front of the lot and still walking times here are being ignored. So how can Google fix this and make drive times more realistic? Google could allow cities to set zones or specific streets where cars are not allowed to pick up, drop anyone off, or park. That way, Maps will direct drivers to more realistic stopping points and show them walking directions to their final destination. This is especially useful in a city with many taxi or rideshare trips because many of those drivers also use Google Maps. Something similar to this already exists for e-scooter sharing services. Parking should also be included in Maps. Like with the zones, cities could be allowed to define parking lots, structures, or streets where vehicle parking is possible. Users could select their desired parking location as the destination or find new spots if unfamiliar with the area, then see walking directions to where they need to go. Users could also have a preset list of favorite parking spots, while Google Maps could then remember where a user parked before showing them walking directions back to their car for the return drive. In Europe, many parking areas have an accurate count of open spaces. Maps should also show drivers this count to prevent wasted trips. This isn't perfect, but neither is the transit version of go to a stop then walk. Yes, estimated travel times for road trips would increase, but this simply reflects the reality of city driving. It isn't making things worse for drivers, it just puts biking and transit on a level playing field. Google Maps ignores combined transit plus biking and driving trips. At my previous job in Germany, I commuted daily from my apartment to the office by train, or S-Bahn, but both getting to the train station and to the office on the other end was always a challenge. I solved this by biking to the station, taking my bike on board, and biking again to the office. Sure, there was a bus 
bus, but biking was faster and more flexible. However, to plan my commute, I had to calculate my biking and train legs separately because Google Maps didn't support this mixed mode approach. Instead, it offered a cumbersome route with long bus or walking connections. This issue isn't unique to Europe either. Growing up in New Hampshire, I had access to one railway line into the city of Boston. While family members could drop me off at the station with a quick 10 minute drive, Google Maps often displayed much longer times in the app. Selecting Transit paired the train with the once hourly Wildcat Transit bus, which stopped at the end of my parents' street. The bus only ran once an hour, and if schedules didn't align, I'd either get no train option or be shown an absurdly long connection time. While the Wildcat bus system is great for local travel, it wasn't built for these types of connections. I have to wonder how many people in my hometown have Googled the train into Boston, having never traveled with Amtrak before, only to see an almost three hour connection and immediately reconsider. Okay, so this is Nick in the edit bay, and I just need to say something real quick. So all of this that I've mentioned so far is true, and I have experienced. However, Google has made some changes in the time since I had both of those experiences. While Maps still does not support combined modes on the PC version of the program, the mobile version now does, and it's actually pretty good. While not perfect, it will usually let the user select car trip, biking, or walking for one or several of the legs on a transit trip. It will also remember those selections to some extent, and you will see evidence of these features in the upcoming section of this video. However, the reason that I did not cut this part of the video altogether is that there is still one major flaw with the combined modes feature. It is hidden all the way at the bottom of every other option when you search for navigation. It almost feels like Google does not want users to know about or use this incredibly powerful feature. I mean, it is almost exactly what I ask for in the upcoming section, but it was hidden so well that I had never seen it until I was about halfway through making the visual section of this video. I would then venture that a majority of users do not know about this feature and do not use it. So Google, please fix this and make it more visible. Anyways, Back to the video. Both of these issues could be solved by individual trip customization. When selecting transit, Google Maps doesn't have an option to add a biking or driving segment manually. There is a toggle option for selecting mixed modes, but Maps still prioritizes what it thinks is best and doesn't allow for the flexibility that I would like to see. If the first issue makes driving seem shorter than it is, this issue makes transit longer than it has to be. Google Maps should allow users to pre-select or directly choose if they have a bike with them. If your trip involves a train or similar fast transit segment, this option would know about your bike and assume that you're taking it to the station, on the train, and then riding it during the final segment. This could extend to bike sharing services, which could be displayed for users further from transit stops. Transit agencies should also have an option to indicate if they allow bikes on board or not. Many transit vehicles allow for this, not all do, and some require a special ticket. This should be something which is easy to find out in Google Maps. Similarly, Google should offer rural transit users the option to start or finish a trip by car. In areas with limited transit, driving for a short leg of the trip makes sense and can be preferable to driving the whole way. My family, for example, would gladly drive me 15 minutes to the station rather than making the entire two hour trip into Boston. Google Maps displays inaccurate locations for transit stops and platform locations when multiple stops exist together. A few months ago, I had an urgent appointment in Mannheim and decided to go by train from Heidelberg. Upon arriving in Mannheim, I calculated directions in Google Maps and found a direct bus departing from Hauptbahnhof Platform E or something similar. Google Maps showed the platform nearby, but after going there, the location was empty. Eventually, I found the platform, but by that point, it was too late. I took a less direct streetcar and was late for my appointment. Transit stops often have more than one platform in each direction, and more complicated stations may have as many platforms as letters in the alphabet, especially here in Germany. Often these platforms serve different services at the same stop, and worse, sometimes entire transit stops are missing from the app in a very wrong location or duplicated in a confusing way. These issues confuse both first-time and experienced transit users alike. People miss trains, buses, and streetcars. In maps, it looks disorganized and is difficult to use. Now, to be fair, this is one item which Google has actually improved even since I started with writing this script. By making individual individual platforms more visible. 
but there are still issues with the stops. For example, Google Maps is also very literal and assumes that all stops need direct footpath access, causing longer trip times. For stops located in the middle of the street, where crosswalks or pedestrian bridges are not in the app, long detours are usually added to reach them. With both of these issues, it isn't entirely Google's fault. Duplicate stops often occur because there are different organizations operating transit versus scheduling it. These transit agencies are also responsible for setup of stops or routes in Google Maps, and sometimes the agency has limited resources or understanding of the tools provided to do this. Transit agencies must put more effort into maintaining correctly set up stations and stops online. And Google needs to be more realistic about how people reach a transit stop. Google Maps shows phantom trips, which makes people think that the transit agency is unreliable. Sometimes Google Maps will show trips in the schedule or navigation, which have been canceled or are not running. This happens often in my own city of Heidelberg. A trip will be scheduled in the Maps timetable, but either does not show on the paper timetable or was canceled according to the agency app. Live updates to arrival times also do not always work, and sometimes the normal weekday schedule is shown during the weekend or on Sundays. Google must work more closely with transit agencies to ensure that their schedules are input correctly. Transit agencies and drivers also need to actually use the tracking software on their buses. Sometimes transit agencies use contract buses or tracking just does not work, but there should always be a contingency in place. This is especially true in places where frequency is much lower than what it should be, forcing reliance on real-time updates and app schedules. While this issue is primarily with the transit agencies themselves, it is amplified by Google's platform, which presents the information as factual. What about transit apps? If you're wondering why I haven't mentioned the many great transit apps out there, don't worry, now it's time to talk about those. Many transit operators, cities, and third parties offer apps. These apps provide excellent highly accurate navigation within specific cities, railways, or transit networks. In fact, they frequently outperform Google Maps for localized transit information. But despite their strengths, these apps face a few key limitations. Firstly, they don't do much to capture new users. Most of these apps exist for after you've already switched to transit as a regular user, not when you're considering it. Most people are not going to download the My VRN app without being familiar with the system. Additionally, visitors to a city or new residents may not even know that these apps exist. Instead, they're likely to start using Google Maps simply because it is what they already have installed on their phones. Another limitation is that these apps often show only navigation from station to station, which does nothing for finding a specific address. I regularly use the DB Navigator app in Germany for specific train and bus connections, and while it does have a door-to-door -door option, the results are mixed. There are some great apps out there, but not every app works in every city. This will need to be solved before any of them become true Google Maps competitors. Also, many transit agencies prefer to invest heavily in their own apps rather than sharing their data with Google. Sometimes transit agencies agencies may lack the necessary expertise to make this data available, or perhaps they do not even have it themselves. These apps are niche and probably always will be. Creating this video has been challenging because many of these issues are inconsistently reproducible. Google Maps exists worldwide, but some regions yield better results than others. Cooperation with transit systems varies, and sometimes transit is the slower option, considering all factors. That said, I've presented enough examples and anecdotes to show that Google Maps needs improvement. It's okay Okay, when Google Maps shows driving is faster but not when it overlooks factors that make transit and cycling more competitive. People are willing to bike or take transit, even if it's slightly slower, but they won't if it's shown as significantly slower. When Maps ignores parking issues, muddles transit schedules, obscures actual stop locations, or doesn't support combined modes of travel, it pushes people towards driving or taking an Uber. Although biking and transit aren't always the best option, Google needs to present accurate information when presenting different different modes as alternatives to each other. Better effort on Google's part would significantly impact the ways in which we get around our cities. Despite some progress, such as prioritizing less walking, fewer transfers, or the fastest connection, there is still a need for more detailed, individual customization beyond what has been already implemented. At the end of the day, public transit and biking must be accessible to more people. But even the 
best transit systems and biking networks in the world won't make a difference if people can't find or trust the information about them. Beyond this, Google Maps needs to include parking when it calculates driving times to improve realism for drivers and potential users of transit or cycling. I love Google Maps and I want to see it improve. I sincerely hope that one day we'll have an app that provides accurate transit information, making it easier to switch to public transit or biking, and ultimately making our cities easier, cheaper, and greener to navigate. And that's where you come in. You can help by boosting this video in the algorithm and sharing it with anyone who has interest in these topics. Like, subscribe, comment, and share. Let's make sure they know we're dissatisfied. Please also provide feedback directly to Google within Maps itself. Thank you for watching, and if you want to see videos a week early, join my Patreon community. Goodbye.